The stars, like dust, billions of them in our galaxy alone, our own sun among them. But what happens when a star dies? If what's left has enough mass, it collapses on itself to become a black hole. Anything that falls into its gravitational grip, even light itself, can never escape. And that's nothing compared to a supermassive black hole. Well, the standard stellar black hole, or, or if you like, is a, a remnant from a massive star. So when a massive star becomes a supernova, the inner regions collapse and they can't be supported by anything and they just collapse down to the singularity and there will be an event horizon, and if anything passes through that event horizon, it can no longer escape from that black hole. Now, supermassive black holes are quite different. They're the same physical phenomenon, but they are supermassive. They are millions, in some cases billions of times, more massive than a stellar black hole. And the formation of them is still somewhat unclear. We think it's linked with the formation and evolution of galaxies, but they clearly are not the remnants of massive stars because they are many, many times more massive than a massive star. There's a supermassive black hole in the neighbourhood, more or less, a mere 30,000 light years away, right in the centre of our own galaxy. But when astronomers looked at it, they saw the unexpected, stars. Not stars being dragged to their deaths, but massive new stars being born. The context where uh, this black hole, uh, we don't expect stars to be able to form as they are elsewhere in our galaxy. Because the, the birthplace of stars are these molecular clouds, these giant gas clouds, which are very dense conglomerations of gas in our galaxy, but would be the best vacuum we could ever have on the Earth. Okay, so they're very tenuous objects, and they get easily pulled apart, and the supermassive black hole would, would shred it uh, before it could ever form stars. And so that made this conundrum. You can't actually form the stars there, and we also see that these are very young stars, and they couldn't have formed elsewhere in the galaxy and then evolved into the centre. Now Professor Bonnell and Dr Rice have built a mathematical model to explain the unexpected. It describes a cloud of gas and dust being drawn towards the supermassive black hole at the heart of our home galaxy, some of it turning into stars. In five seconds, this simulation describes a process that takes 50,000 years. So what we're seeing is some giant molecular cloud that's falling in towards this black hole, probably a collision with another molecular cloud has caused it to lose some energy and fall into this black hole. And because it's falling in from such a long distance away, it will tend to fall in in an elongated orbital type of way. And so some of the material that gets captured from this molecular cloud ends up in a disk, but in a very eccentric disk around this, this black hole. Each of these tiny white dots is a massive star. But what does it all tell us? Well, I think it it tells us that star formation can take place in very odd environments. So it's helping us to understand the formation of stars, right? And that helps us to understand our own existence because we we, we live around a star. So we're trying to understand how stars form. This is one environment that's very strange. So to a certain extent, we've simply applied our own knowledge of star formation in standard environments to a strange environment and got a very good result. So we think it's helping us to understand our, our... and understand star formation, but also it's helping us to try and understand how these supermassive black holes form, because they are linked in some way to galaxy formation. We don't quite know how, but all of this adds mass to these black holes and may be a mechanism by which these black holes have been growing through, through time. This is the latest significant announcement to come from SUPA, the Scottish University's Physics Alliance. It was set up to pool talent across our universities to help Scottish science punch its weight. This is a big success for SUPA because we have uh, the two uh, present members of the team are different institutions, one in St Andrews, one in in, um, Edinburgh, and this alliance has allowed us to get together uh, to collaborate and actually even provide us the necessary computational hardware to carry out these investigations. So our supercomputer was funded by the Scottish Executive through SUPA. And so this is a wonderful achievement for SUPA, and we hope that in the next stage we'll even be able to have even larger and, and bigger achievements. For those of us who may tonight be perturbed by the thought of a supermassive black hole lurking at the centre of the Milky Way, a few words of reassurance. Even the stars that we're forming, which are very, very close to the uh, supermassive black hole, they are within a half a light year of the supermassive black hole. And we're 30,000 light years further away. Even they are actually very safe. They're not going to be perturbed. They'd have to go in a factor of 100 or 1,000 times further before they'd actually be pulled apart uh, to and and disrupted and sucked in by the black hole. So we're safe. That's not a worry. So at the risk of sounding like a cosmic Nick Ross, don't have nightmares. Do sleep well.